welcome to a new edition of our show, Money Means Business. And as you always say, business means money, stability, and business means a lot of money. And uh, we are talking uh, a lot of economy, of course, interrelated uh, to the political scene, as primarily in Egypt, uh, in the Middle East, and then in the whole world, of course, all is, uh, all you know, is interrelated uh, together. I'm Nermin Azim, and uh, we have with us uh, right now uh, our guest, uh, Dr. Abbas Zouri, uh, economic analyst. Welcome, sir, with us here Thank on TV uh, International. Uh, we go back a little bit to the title because you were wondering, you know, money means business. Is it only money that means business? What goes on? But uh, we will go for it first for a, a short break after we will be back again uh, starting uh, our chat. Uh, stay tuned sure. to us, go away. <laughs> We're back again to Money Means Business, and we're joined with uh, our guest, Dr. Osama Murad, financial expert. Welcome, sir, with us here. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, we're talking about myriads of, of things, of course, but, you know, as we just start, uh, every, there are lots of developments, but what should we start with? You know, first, uh, there was a question, you know, like uh, uh, Dr. Zori was asking when I said Money Means Business, he looked at the title and said Money Means Business. Uh, what, does, what does it make uh, business, a good business? Well, uh, what makes good business? Of course, money in the first place, but you got resources, and it doesn't mean resources, what you have under the ground or what the country own, <coughs> but uh, human resources is also business. If you got human resources with a uh, young age, it's uh, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can invest it in a lot of company and uh, a lot of work. And also the culture and uh, the willing of the people to work. Yes. It's also business. In short, mm -hmm. I, I will not go further in details because if I will be going with details, I will not give a chance to. Uh, no, we were just, you know, like, we're just, you know, just, you know, what we're wondering, you know, like, what does it make you know, like a business? You know, like, only that, you know, like money is business. And I just added stability also, you know, um, sure. can make a lot of business. Okay, what do you think, sir? Well, uh, money means almost everything. Yes. It drives politics, yes. it drives uh, human uh, beings, and it drives the resources to the place where management is. Yes. I would say uh, management uh, is business. Management is the key uh, production factor uh, now, or maybe the uh, sole one, which we can uh, see in nations rising and corporations rising and falling. Well, you know, like then going out to the scene and the developments taking place in Egypt, what should we start with? You know, like the budget, what is it? You know, like uh, uh, well, the latest you know, the visit of King Salman of Saudi Arabia. How do you see it? Well, uh, the the budget is business as usual. Uh, no big changes. Uh, maybe uh, below expectations spending on social aspects like health and education, because of the budget deficit and Egypt's willingness to keep the budget deficit below the ten percent. Uh, hurdle and to achieve the necessary gross spending on investment and production. Uh, definitely King Salman's uh, visit and the numbers which are continuously coming up and the many MOUs and uh, letters of interests which are being signed is the major economic uh, incident in uh, 2016. It's not only this week. So no. <laughs> So how do you see, um, well, uh, the visit of King Salman of uh, Saudi Arabia to Egypt? Well, first of all, I would like to consider the fact that King Salman is one of the strongest king after King Faisal in the history of Saudi Arabia. And of course, it's a victory 
not only for Egypt, but also for Saudi Arabia. The visit is investment. And it is not like before that they come to give you money to go uh, further to build houses or roads. But the, it, there's a change in the moment. Uh, they see in Egypt uh, a future, which I say the future in the business is in Egypt in the moment. Um, maybe a lot of people can disagree about this, but according to my experience in Europe and the whole world, I can say to you the future in Egypt, but people must have some patience a little bit. Uh, the investment what the Saudi delegation um, supposed to do in Egypt, it's a huge, it's big. And what I like most in the investment which they have uh, done in the big hospital in Cairo, Asalaini, and uh, also the investment of the roads, which will um, keep Egypt and Saudi Arabia uh, easy to catch by car, and also from Morocco or other countries. Um, and as somebody said, um, <coughs> uh, between England and uh, Europe, they make a gate under the ground, uh, which is they speak different languages. But what do you think for a gate for uh, people who speak the same language? It would be much stronger. And um, I hope that this will open a gate for United Arabs, uh, not Kingdom, but United Arabs, excuse, which President Nasser has tried in the, in the best. Um, the visit is, is really um, Admirable, because I just was watching it from abroad and also from inside what goes on. It's very, very direct and also very um, organized. And uh, that's what I, uh, I like. And uh, also I like to say about it. Yeah. Okay. How do you see the whole situation, the visit, sir? I, I uh, confirm uh, uh, what my uh, colleague uh, said and I can only undermine uh, the visit is different than any state president yes. because um, the address or the initial expectation of the visit, this is a military visit mm. to discuss a military intervention in the region between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. And this is how foreign press viewed it before the visit. Yes. Also, we had news about economic assistance being mainly developments in Sinai and housing, which is very strategic for Egypt because uh, security is because of habitation in Sinai, will increase and will uh, provide Sinai residents uh, with adequate housing and will also uh, force or entice uh, migration from the valley and upper Egypt to uh, Sinai. Then uh, comes the uh, Kasralini uh, Hospital, which is medical uh, uh, spending, increases the social impact in Egypt, but also Kasralini being one of the flagships of the Arab world in uh, medicine, uh, despite its weak economic uh, performance, but still it is one of the destinations sought by many uh, for uh, treatments. The bridge is extremely strategic, uh, connecting both uh, countries. Uh, Egypt is one of the top countries in the world, if not the top country, providing pilgrims and Umrah visitors to Saudi Arabia. So the traffic is already there. Mm -hmm. So this is not a bridge uh, like the Dover Calais uh, Channel, which will uh, seek the uh, passengers. There is already existing traffic this traffic can easily double or triple. That's from the passenger side and Hajj and Umrah side. But also it will increase Saudi tourists to Sinai mm -hmm. because it's only uh, uh, a few steps away, especially for the residents of the uh, eastern, uh, uh, of the western uh, provinces. Uh, and also if you put all things uh, into uh, a line, uh, it will serve cargo and industry in the Suez Canal area, especially the area which is east of the canal. Now it has uh, easily a cargo and transport road, which is the cheapest form of transportation uh, available, whereby Saudi and all Gulf uh, countries can set up their car factories in uh, Egypt in the Suez Canal uh, area 
and then export uh, to their uh, countries. Uh, and it also can also serve as a hub for uh, transit shipping for Saudi and Gulf exports to Africa, being Egypt a member of the uh, COMESA agreement, but also to Europe being a member of the uh, Euromed uh, agreement. So it is great. We're still waiting for another important factor, which is investments. We have heard many uh, figures, many prospect uh, projects uh, being done. Definitely the most concrete one, being one of the biggest investors, is Sheikh Saleh Kamel, who is, uh, we consider him almost uh, Egyptian, but uh, many others are uh, following and coming. So it remains to be seen um, who and what will be uh, invested. There will be a strong focus definitely on uh, real estate. There is an annual fee now for the uh, rental for the uh, islands, which ensures Egypt the uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, currency inflow, but also we are saving around three to four billion a year from the provision of petroleum uh, products. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the package will ease pressure uh, on uh, foreign currency, but on the economy as a whole. Uh, the ball is in uh, the Egyptian hands uh, now uh, by making life for investors easier. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, Minister Dalia Khorshid has a huge role on uh, doing what is not a great job for ministers, which is enhancing the climate. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, not cutting any ribbon, it is not a special project, but investors have to feel that doing business in Egypt uh, is easy and uh, thus uh, invest more and more because uh, after we are attracting uh, the big investors, we want also the small and medium-sized investors which provide uh, more jobs uh, for Egypt. Mm -hmm. Things are definitely uh, moving. The military part has not been disclosed, but um, I think that uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia get, are getting more aligned, uh, mm -hmm. removing the differences or uh, at least acknowledging the differences and working uh, together. We cannot see this uh, in vacuum without the announced visit of French president to the region uh, in a week. Mm -hmm. So uh, something is being cooked, uh, be that Libya or uh, Syria or uh, Yemen. So there is something going uh, on on a bigger scale with uh, multiple uh, alliances. Mm -hmm. no. well, uh, <coughs> if we get back to the word about the bridge, um, I think the bridge is one of the most important uh, projects what they are busy with for investment because this is not only for tourists but it's for the export and for the economical for both countries. Um, as an exporter, uh, I can tell you this will make a lot of differences because the cargo from Egypt to Saudi Arabia is more expensive than the cargo from Egypt to Europe. So this will make life easy for exporter and also for Egyptian product. About the point of military, um, I think Saudi Arabia and Egypt are working together since a very long time. You can see the war in Yemen. Um, they are united. Um, sometimes it's having uh, ups and downs, but uh, I'm glad that they fix it right away. Uh, of course, there's a lot of things going behind the curtain which we cannot see, but I'm glad that we cannot see that, except some people who can see that, that will be not uh, create a big hole or a big gap. So I, I'm really um, glad about what's going on, uh, about the, um, the Egyptian way of uh, encouraging the investment to do investment in Egypt. This we have talked about before. This must be changed. Uh, it is not for the minister. It is not for uh, the high level. It is for the employee and all the government. This must be changed. Otherwise, you can get investment from the whole world, but they will stop immediately half away because paper registration cannot go quicker as it should be. Yeah, cannot go quicker <laughs> as it is. So I am glad that the situation has become to this point and I think it will be much more serious than it was before. So I see hope and I see positive uh, things in economic and also in political. Uh, in military, 
I think that well, it's another project uh, which is much more stronger than all the investment because um, both countries needed to keep the balance in the region. Because as you see, the region and the best was really about to destroy. So I am very glad with what they have reached, what's going to happen in the future. Also, I am very happy with our president, Sisi, because I see this man as a wonderful uh, person. He is traveling all over to collect which cannot be collected to help the economical situation in Egypt to improve and to, to grow. And I'm really glad about it and happy to it. So I don't know what you think about it, but this is my, um, my point of view. We've, uh, we've gone a long way. We've gone a very long way. And uh, we hope uh, it turns out uh, well. We're, uh, we're just conservative because uh, we had a fantastic investment conference last year. But the results one year after were not up to the not expectations. The standards that were expected, uh, definitely. I, I, I wish and on that the Egyptian government uses uh, this success as a springboard Mm -hmm. Not as a target, uh, not as the end in mind, but uh, let us build on the success and get more and more investment, be that Saudi and Gulf yeah. and other. It depends on us. I mean, yeah. the man done his job perfectly, really. You cannot say anything about it. And if somebody says something about it, there's people, they don't understand how things go in the world. He done everything. So the, the, the success must be depend in the Egyptian people. They must work. And they must understand, they must have some patience, and they must do their best to reach the point where the president goes for it. And it is important. It is time to move on. It's time to be positive and to leave the negative things behind. Uh, from yesterday, we learn for tomorrow. But we cannot always say, oh, if this was happened, don't forget about it. We have to move on with a positive thinking that we can reach our aim and our point. Yeah, you mentioned, like, uh, uh, Minister uh, Daya Horshi, you know, uh, what difference can she make, you know, um, in that with the investments, you know, and the investment laws and uh, problems that we were there with the red, you know, in view of the red tape we have and uh, the difficulties, you know, she's not working alone, of course, you know. Yes, and it's, it's a very difficult job because a lot of things in the investment climate are not in the hands of the investment ministry. Uh, but she's a very strong uh, manager. And she knows how business is done in the private sector. She knows how to take decisions. And uh, we also, as Egyptians know, despite the red tape, if we want something to be done, we can do it. It's mm -hmm. not the laws and regulations. It's the applications of uh, laws and uh, regulations. And I think with the uh, extreme backing she will get from the prime minister and the president, uh, we can uh, have a very uh, sensible uh, economic policy, especially that we have a very capable finance uh, minister uh, also, who has three very capable uh, deputies, Minister uh, Amr Garhi. So, uh, just uh, I think we can use the uh, willingness or interest of Saudi investment to kick off and start privatization again. It's something we need to do urgent because greenfield projects take many years to do. Investments come uh, in many uh, years and they add value. Mm -hmm. But privatization has a direct impact. Money comes in immediately and the change of performance and the value added to the economy from the improvement, from the uh, uh, transfer of management um, is very strong. We have seen and I wish that the government issues uh, these statistics that the improvement in the companies sold and the taxes collected by the government by far exceed the sale of assets. So it is not, the target is not to sell high, the target is to sell to somebody who can turn this around or take it if it's a growing company and grow and run with it, add more jobs, add technology, add more exports. So do you think you know, there is a problem with transparency or uh, there are lots of things that we lack and we're not, again, we didn't get used to is like to present you know, to the people every time you know, so that people understand what's going on because some people say, what you, you know, like what's you, what has been done. Uh, there is a lot, you know, there is you know, like now in like uh, raising prices, of course rising prices with a with dollar in you know, a rate and all that. Um, how do you see that? Um, I think it's just that the government in Egypt feels 
because of the history that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rather fatherly approach and it's afraid to confront people with the uh, situation. Uh, people have dealt with the situation and know how they see the prices on the streets. Uh, it is not a failure of the government. It is, this is how our economic situation has come um, due to our past uh, performance. It's not really the responsibility of this uh, president or uh, the current government, it's an inheritance. But their responsibility is the future on to enhance that. The problem is they don't understand their thinking like now. You know, we had a revolution. Well, then, you know, things should change drastically and then we'll have you know, like a lot of money in our hands, you know, everybody will be rich on the spur of the moment. I don't think you can accuse the people for this kind of action. It's, uh, it's a mentality which needs time to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, can, you can talk years about it. <clears throat> but it must be a group of people lead the country in the success because, because you cannot depend on everybody. There is difference between people. People who have the courage to, to carry on and go for it and there is people they only need to eat and drink and sleep. So I think the difference must be evaluated in the future for you can choose the right group to lead the country which is available. We have a lot of good people in Egypt. They can lead the country but how you can choose them and how you can put them in the right position. This needs time. You cannot do it in a day or a week or a month, but it needs time. Other countries had 17 years to, after the revolution, like France, for example, to organize the country. Uh, in Egypt, we were organized since the pharaoh. And actually, in between, we just get back to the old ancient. And I see the future uh, positive. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, I think in a five in five years times. Despite what we are surrounded of, you know, like uh, somebody, everybody in Egypt will have, uh, uh, I don't say a perfect life, but mm -hmm. a better life than two years ago and then now. So we are in the progress of better economy, and I think we are also in the progress for creating more jobs. Look at the investment what has done, but. We need education and training on the job, also that people are willing to learn, and this is important. Are they willing to learn? Um, I have no doubt they are willing and they learn very fast, uh, provided that the uh, environment is there and that the motivation is there. Mm -hmm. The current problem uh, we are facing is that because of the urgency, the president and the government were running ahead. Now it's the time to align the people because the elite, be that business, culture, political thought, mm -hmm. need to be aligned and have a real dialogue. A real dialogue where each party listens mm -hmm. so we all move into one direction. Because as a government you can pull a country out of a problem but you cannot continue that for a long period uh, of time. So you need to have everybody aligned from the very small child uh, to do his work and learn uh, best to the business uh, people, to the industrious, to the thought leaders, to the politicians, everybody to assume his responsibility. People do not assume responsibility and do not work if they don't understand or see the target. Yeah. So we need more uh, communication, uh, which we have in companies, which is internal uh, communication, yeah. to let the Egyptian people know where our targets are and what is expected, where the opportunities are, because this is the land of opportunities and I just uh, need to tell people, go and run, be creative, be innovative, be entrepreneurial uh, and this will create uh, a lot of jobs because uh, unfortunately mega projects don't create as many jobs as small and medium sized uh, enterprises, mm -hmm. which are the real hope for Egypt. Uh, especially as the doctor uh, said, with the 90 million population, which is uh, in majority young, there's a lot of creativity, energy, entrepreneurship and innovation, which just needs to be unleashed. But, you know, like, what are we doing here to uh, encourage the uh, SMEs, you know, in order to just go in, like, well, uh, to create more jobs, as you said, and just you know to grow uh, the economy. Do we have in like uh, a bonus for that? Are we making the life easy uh, in order to just you know, you know grow in like uh, instead of just dwindling? 
Well, I'll give you an example. When you are driving on the street, huh, you just wake up in the morning and you are going to your job. Um, if the street is clean and is well organized, everybody is driving behind each other, so you're coming very quiet to your job. Um, what we have now, when you wake up in the morning and you step in the car and you are on the road, you face a lot of difficulty. When you arrive to your work, you are done. You cannot deduct anything. No. And this is what we have to do. We have to organize our living first. Second, we have to invest in our know-how. Like we said, the president bring a lot of people from abroad to invest in Egypt. But as Egyptian, we said our younger generation is more than 45% or 55%? 50. 50, 50 to 55%, which no other country had. This is wills. This is money. Because they are young, you can invest in them. But we have to learn them how they can invest in know-how. The know-how in Egypt is not really as it should be. We need to invest in it. We need to use the right way for learning. Uh, we need also to create um, uh, subsidization for companies that they can train them on people well. Because if you are going to apply for a job... Subsidized companies, the, 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 the government, government is paying yes. so much. Uh, subsidized uh, money-wise? Um, yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, we, we subsidize in everything, in food, in petroleum, in everything. So I can say, instead of this, we can just, you cannot cut it once, huh? you have to go step by step. Huh? But we have to subsidize companies on training. We have to subsidize companies that can train people well. Uh, if you hire someone, do not put him in the job right away. You have to put him for three months training. Either every six months, he has to go on course. And do not let the company pay that, because the company, you have to encourage them to hire people. And you can encourage them more if you can say, okay, just hire the people, and we will take care of the training, that they can do the job well, for the company can make efforts of money. And that is what we have to do in Egypt. But isn't that, you know, a more load, you know, on the, on the government that is just struggling in lots of ways? I don't think so, because... Um, if the government will do that, mm. they will create more jobs, and what, this is what we are looking for. And also, they will encourage the investment and the investors to carry on in their own business. Because you cannot expe expect from an investor that he can go give training to his people every two months and every three months or every six months. He will not do that. None. None will do it. So we have to find a way to create something for them. How do you see that? Is it feasible? Um, it is feasible. The government will not do it, but can do it through tax benefits by yes, uh, uh, right. giving uh, tax rebates additional on training. We have uh, a problem of vocational training uh, especially. Yes. Yes. We unfortunately abolished the vocational uh, ministry. There is overlapping jurisdiction uh, for vocational training between the Ministry of Industry and Trade and the Ministry of uh, Education, which needs to be uh, solved. And I think that the government uh, needs uh, rather to step away from vocational training, open it up to the private uh, sector, mm -hmm. and let that be an industry itself. What a beautiful industry. You have 20, 30 million people in the workforce whom you need to train continuously. We have excellent human resources and training companies in Egypt which are exporting their services uh, to the Arab world and uh, to Africa. And we need to just make training habit to have a paradigm shift that training is not an expense, rather it's an investment uh, in the future. If you increase the performance of a single employee by 10% through training, actually training it does, is not an expense. It's an investment which has an excellent uh, return on invested money. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed, um, I, I, if I look at the people in the street, huh, we said we cannot accuse those people. Mm -hmm. There is a, a big part of Egyptian need only to eat and drink yes. and need to buy those things very cheap. If you're going to take the subsidization out, they will cry. 
They will go the streets, they will break things. But how we can make a balance between investment and investors and MOE? And that is a clue what we are talking about. Egypt is not a poor country. Egypt is one of the richest countries in the world. But the only thing what here is, the people are richer than the government. But it must be opposite. The government must be richer than people. Then they can arrange and organize everything. And this is important. Mm -hmm. um, it might be that not so much people know about it, but this is true. Like we were talking about the dollar and the central bank. Exactly, I was going to talk about the central bank and that where is the all that, yeah. exactly. We said the central bank <laughs> must control the market. But I see the opposite of that. The market controls the central bank at the moment. And until now, they cannot find a way to control it, which is very easy. And I said it before, which is very easy. So we have to arrange one by one. Let the country lead the people and not the people lead the country. And that's important. I tend to disagree. Okay. Uh, the central bank will not be able to manage the economy. No central bank uh, is anymore. The world is moving into a different area whereby uh, ideas and supranational uh, companies and uh, entrepreneurs are taking over and leading uh, economies and uh, nations because of their flexibility. We are in the knowledge area. This is actually the missing part in our infrastructure. We have uh, now upgraded uh, tremendously our electricity, a huge achievement on the electricity sector. That's right. We're working on sanitation and water. Mm -hmm. We're working on roads. We're not working on our broadband. Uh, internet uh, enough. This project has been delayed now mm -hmm. for three years. There should not be uh, a delay. It's a major component now. You cannot have business without internet and uh, information. And uh, now you need to open up uh, information. And because of the size of the market, mm -hmm. the central bank is always smaller than the market and thus the market controls. And uh, this is also uh, stated in the very courageous, strong statement of the central bank that we will adopt a flexible uh, uh, policy because central banks in the world now cannot intervene uh, enough. The economies are too big for the central bank uh, to manage. And actually, Egypt needs to move more to decentralization rather than more centralized and uh, control. And also decentralization law and application is waiting. I think the government announced that we will have uh, this year or beginning next year municipal uh, elections which will be uh, the first step but uh, the necessary step is that we have a law giving autonomy and responsibility to the different uh, municipalities and governments and cities whereby our districts, governments, uh, governorates and municipalities will compete. We'll compete for better schools, we'll compete for attracting uh, investors, not in a centralized manner, but this competition will enhance uh, the business environment and it will also let people travel within the country to areas which are better performing and thus lift the load of uh, lesser developed uh, areas uh, in uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. How long do you think we need to, to reach that? And uh, how? I agree with you. It's, it, it will take five years, uh, I think, if we take the right uh, steps. Because um, whenever we talk about social market economy or market economy, we, we take the part which is opening up the market. But we don't uh, consider the checks and balances, which are there even in the most liberal uh, economy, which whereby we need strong independent institutions, be that civil society or government, it doesn't matter, but there needs to be always a checks and balance institution, which like uh, for consumers, there is a consumer protection uh, authority, there is an anti-monopoly uh, yeah. institution. So you need to have those in order for uh, that fight or payoff or pull and push is very healthy for the economy to find the best suitable way 
uh, for the country. Yes, and Amit, how do you see uh, um, well, the, the new future, let's say the future in uh, light of uh, the, the change in the variables taking place now? Well, on the domestic fronts, uh, things are drastically uh, improving. We're very uh, optimistic with uh, foreign investments coming on, with the shakeup in the uh, uh, government. Uh, we uh, were, of course, worried by the regional tensions and situations. However, they normally play out positively uh, for uh, Egypt, and uh, thus uh, I think uh, the next three years will be uh, fantastic uh, for Egypt. The global economy is not doing so well, and that's our main uh, hurdle, but still we can compete, and we have to understand that in a not fast-growing economy, you need to do better in the other countries in order to get a better, a uh, bigger market share. Yes, Dr. Samara, thank you very much for being with us. And Dr. Abbasi, yeah. thank you very much for being with us. Uh, uh, we have to go now for the latest in the stock market with my colleague Abir Hussain. I'm Nabi Nazim signing off. We'll see you again next week. God bless our Egypt. God bless our Egyptian army and Egyptians. Uh, goodbye for now. of International Cooperation Sahar Nasr said that Saudi-Egyptian strategic bilateral affairs have advanced beyond political understanding and support, establishing development and economic programs which would benefit both countries lies ahead. Nasser pointed out that the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman's visit to Egypt, will provide a substantial foundation for future comprehensive cooperation. Nasser added that both the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Egypt will endorse several high-caliber agreements involving different sectors. Minister Nasser is the Egyptian party coordinator for the Egyptian-Saudi Coordination Council. She has led the Egypt representative delegation to the fifth council meeting in Riyadh last March. A total of 3,744 Saudi companies have been established in Egypt with investments worth $6.117 billion since 1970 till the end of February 2016. These investments are distributed across seven sectors with industry taking the lion's share 785 companies with $2 billion Saudi investments, then constructions with 629 companies with $1.3 billion Saudi investments. Meanwhile, Saudi King Salman bin Abdelaziz started on Thursday a five-day official visit to Egypt, which is his first since become to the throne in 2015. The Egyptian government signed 13 loan agreements worth $1.9 billion with Saudi Arabia. The kingdom will provide most loans to develop the Sinai Peninsula by injecting $1.5 billion in 11 investments, including King Salman University in Tour Sinai, as well as projects in poultry farming and land reclamation and in the new Suez Canal. Egyptian exchange is likely to rise to 7,700 mark on Wednesday and optimism about Saudi King Salman's visit to Egypt. The EGX may engage gained 80.96 points or 1.07% to close at 7,657 points. Iha 
Nawab Saeed, the head of the technical analysis, anticipated EGX 30 to test 7,700 points, which is currently a mid-term resistance level. The index failed to break above due to the lack of new incentives for the stock market and blue chip stocks. Likewise, Ayman Fouda, the head of the Capital Market Committee, said that the main index is likely to test the mark of 7,720 and then 7,800 if blue chip stocks are pushed higher by institutions purchasing momentum. Investments in Egypt reached $6.2 billion through 3,400 companies against $2.5 billion worth of Egyptian investments in the kingdom through 1,300 companies. During a meeting of the Saudi Egyptian Business Council, Industry Minister Tariq Qabil said that Egyptian exports represent 1% of Saudi imports, while Saudi exports account for 5% of the country's imports. Trade exchange between Egypt and Saudi Arabia amounted to 23.8 billion rials or 56 billion Egyptian pounds in 2015. Egypt's central bank said it kept the pound stable at 8.78 pounds to the dollar in an extra foreign currency auction, coinciding with a visit by Saudi Arabia's King Salman to sign an oil deal. The bank said it sold $118.7 million of an intended $120 million. Meanwhile, the pound weakened on the black market as demand for the dollars rose. Egypt has been facing a dollar shortage since a popular uprising in 2011 drove away tourists and foreign investors, major sources of the hard currency. The black market for dollars has sucked up liquidity from the banking system, while the central bank kept the pound artificially strong and Russian dollars through its weekly auctions putting a strain on foreign reserves. government is in negotiations with Kuwait for securing dollar deposit to back the country's cash reserves. The sources noted that the deposit may reach $2 billion with an interest rate of 3%. International Cooperation Minister in Egypt, Sahar Nasr, said Egypt would negotiate with Kuwait to secure a loan or a deposit for boosting the Egyptian budget. Declining crude oil price worldwide to Egypt in the range of 35 US dollars per barrel is likely to benefit the country as a big oil importer, yet it may affect foreign investments in the Arab country, particularly those coming from oil-rich Gulf states. Compared to more than $100 per barrel in 2014, the price of a barrel of the WTI crude oil stands Tuesday at $35.7 and Brent crude oil at $37.6. While the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries said its most recent basket price stood at $33.33 a barrel. Lebanon and
and Palestine joined Sunday the Agadir Free Trade Agreement, giving them access to Jordanian, Egyptian, Moroccan, and Tunisian markets. The Arab Mediterranean Free Trade Agreement was inked in Agadir, Morocco in 2001 and took effect in 2007. It allows Egypt, Jordan, Morocco and Tunisia access to each other's markets while linking all members to European markets. The membership of Lebanon and Palestine was approved during the third meeting for the Agadir member ministers of trade on Sunday in Cairo. Iraq plans to lower the oil price forecast in its 2016 budget to about $32 a barrel from $45, widening its fiscal deficit by $7 billion. The new price estimate is based on the continued low level of global oil prices in recent months. The adjustment is expected to add about $6 billion to the OPEC producers' budget deficit unless offsetting measures are taken. Iraq's current budget, which projects oil exports of 3.6 million barrels per day, predicts a deficit of 24 trillion Iraqi dinars. prices are rising but uncertainty ahead of the EU referendum could slow the market. Property prices increased by 10.1% in the year to March compared with a year earlier. The lender found marking the average home worth $214,811. This annual growth accelerated from 9.7% seen in the previous two months, but the housing market could soften over the coming months amid uncertainty over the EU vote. The UK will have a referendum on the 23rd of June on whether or not to remain a member of the European Union. Heavy assets rallied driving the dollar to its lowest level against the yen since 2014. European and US stocks pulled back after having advanced Wednesday. The dollar fell 1.4% against the yen, according to fact set, bringing its year-to-date loss to around 10%. Gold rose 1.3% to $1,239.3 an ounce and government bonds rose. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note fell to 1.725% from 1.753% on Wednesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 110 points or 0.6% at 17,605 shortly after the opening bell. Scotland's economy grew by 0.2% in the last quarter of 2015 but trailed the UK's performance as a whole. On an annual basis, Scotch gross domestic product, the GDP, grew by 0.9%. By comparison, UK GDP grew by 0.6% over the final quarter and by 2.1% on an annual basis. Scotland's services sector grew by 0.3% during the last period, while the production sector contracted by 0.1%. Construction output expanded by 0.1%.
ranking higher at the end of 2015, investors have been asking whether gold prices are really changing course and starting a new longer term bull trend higher or whether it is merely correcting in the midst of a bear market. Gold scare and technical position seems to ask the very same question in terms of chart patterns and price action. The gold price is at interesting crossroads which indicates the possibility of an almost binary outcome on the horizon. A break higher at this critical juncture would open the way up to strong gains all the way up to 1,300 and 200 days moving average at 1,329, which is our base case scenario. National Monetary Fund Chief Christine Lagarde has dismissed reports that the body is trying to push Greece towards default as simple nonsense. The IMF conducts its negotiations in good faith, not by the way of threats, and we do not communicate through leaks, according Lagarde, who wrote in a letter to Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tispiras. Her letter comes after WikiLeaks published a transcript of IMF officials discussing bailout negotiations. One says a crisis could force a deal. Greece publicly demanded an explanation after the leak, suggesting the comments meant the IMF could be planning to deliberately prolong debt negotiations until the country was closed, running out of money.